Hello, and welcome to Spotlight on Charities. In this series, we feature extraordinary charities that have missions designed to change the world for the better. Today, our guests are with the Children's Guardian Fund, and I'd like to introduce you to them. First of all, we have Marianne Sharp, who is a board member, and then we have Mike Cogswell, who is a volunteer guardian at Lighten. And welcome. Love to have you here with us today. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah, thank you. What are the age ranges of these children? Anything from infancy um, until 18 is when they age out of the system. It's, it, they, they, when they turn 18, they age out. Our fund also helps with the children that do age out of the system right. tr into transitioning into independent adult life. Oh. Because typically, what, are they given $50 or something? Yeah, I'm not sure how much the amount is, I but mean, there is a transitioning program. But we, we have a transitioning program that was not there, that's not there in, that's not provided by the state. They're just usually shown the door and off they go, um, never having lived alone or without any sort of, you know. So they're hardly prepared. Not at all. And, yeah. and we, we, that is one of our missions is to help those children m move on from the foster or the state care system and into productive jobs and, mm -hmm. and, a, and the hope of a, of a good, pr prosperous, normal life. I see. Right. Sending them off with more opportunity than they would have without your help. Well, we, we try to help find um, uh, them places to live. Right. Jobs, you know, we work the community for you know finding helping helping get those jobs, right. transportation, um, uh, you know whether it be a bicycle or a bus pass. Right. Uh, but you know we don't just work with with the little ones. We work with we work from the from the babies up to the ones that are aging out. Okay. Well, and the guardian ad litem uh, in is it is separate from the Children's Guardian Fund. Okay, so explain that to me, Mike. What exactly is a guardian ad litem? Well, a guardian ad litem is a volunteer who works as an advocate for these children. Okay. Most of these children have no one really looking out for them. So a guardian ad litem makes home visits on a, at least a monthly basis and then advocates for the, church, for the child in the home, in the schools, and particularly in the courts. There is a, a quarterly judicial review for each child where a written report is provided to the judge. And then there's a hearing where, among other people, the guardian ad litem makes a verbal report to the court on the safety of the child and any other issues that come up. What made you decide to become a volunteer? For years, I had been a big brother and enjoyed it greatly and uh, but my little brother had aged out and I uh, a friend of mine uh, suggested that I become a guardian ad litem and um, because of various life experiences I thought it would be a good idea and I've uh, I've really enjoyed it it's very rewarding and so Marianne how does your organization get involved well um we have a, a, our website is set up for the guardian ad litems pointed to the children to apply online okay. for what, you know, what the child needs. Okay. And, you know, whether it, you know, they've been placed in, in uh, relative mm -hmm. care and it's a grandma and, but it's a baby and she needs a crib. We get that crib. Okay. If, um, Mike has a wonderful story about, um, three little girls that um, go, go ahead. And yeah, the, the three little girls had been separated uh, temporarily from their mother. Mm -hmm. Their mother had gone through various pa parenting classes, counseling, she and was eventually... She basically approved the court's recommendations to get her children back. Right. So they had been reunited. Uh, they had a modest place to live, but the little girls had no beds to sleep on. They were mm -hmm. sleeping on the floor. Ooh. So through the Children's Guardian Fund, mm -hmm. uh, I was able to quickly, and that's one of the key words, is very quickly, 
uh, get funding for beds and bedding. Mm -hmm. And the little girls were overjoyed. You, it was like How old the, were the girls? They were five, six, and nine. Mm -hmm. So they were unfortunately used to sleeping on the floor. I've also seen situations where uh, school clothing was provided mm -hmm. uh, by the Children's Guardian Fund or funding for it, uh, summer camp, uh, and tutoring. So uh, it's very uh, useful services and very rewarding services to the children. Yes, indeed. Actually, I'd, I'd like to show some video, uh, which uh, we'd like to show now. Every day in our community, a child is removed from an abusive or neglectful family and placed in the state's care. In overseeing child protection and um, criminal investigations, you see these children at their most dire when they're watching their parents overdose or they've been severely abused and neglected. And you just really understand the importance of continuing to support these children. There are more than 1,400 children like these who are waiting for adoption or are in temporary foster care right here in our community who face great challenges. They don't want to be, oh, there's the kid in the foster home. They want to be just like every other kid and have the things that other kids have. The children who are, want to go to a dance recital and don't have the money to afford a costume or they want to play softball or baseball or soccer and they don't, can't afford the, the glove or the bat or the shoes that they need. Those are the little things, uh, maybe even going to a summer camp. Uh, and we just take that for granted as parents ourselves and what we've provided for our own children. The Children's Guardian Fund is a privately funded organization that immediately responds to the needs of children who are removed from abusive and neglectful homes. And that could mean providing a crib for a baby that's placed with a grandmother. It can mean providing some um, uniforms for a child who's been placed in a new school system and has no resources to get it in the middle of the school year. Or it could also mean some tutoring for a child who's behind in school. I'm a guardian of Lytham, and so uh, as a guardian, I use the Children's Guardian Fund to provide the extra little things which kids need, but the state cannot provide, such as tutoring, uh, a bicycle, uh, a prom dress, this sort of thing. The simple things that we take for granted, we go home and we get into our bed or we have a pillow, the Children's Guardian Fund is able to provide those things when they're taken out of the home and to provide a normalcy into going into a foster home or some other type of housing. Most children in state care come from chaotic and abusive environments. Many have never had a birthday cake or present, a book, or even a stuffed animal. I had a six-year-old boy who I actually took my granddaughter and we had Christmas. I took him as Christmas and it was the first time, and he told my granddaughter this, not me, first time he'd ever had a Christmas present. And my granddaughter says to me, Grandma, is that true? And I said, yeah, if he said it is, I'm sure it is. Six years old and never had a Christmas present. We work to reestablish normal childhood experiences in the lives of children who are removed from abusive and neglectful homes. So uh, creating memories that they may have never had a chance to create where they were coping with chaos in their previous life. If you just gave one-fifth of probably what you gave to your grandchildren to the Children's Guardian Fund, that would make an enormous difference in what we could provide to those children to make their lives, I'd say, a little bit more normal. Be the one. Be the one. Be the one. Be the one. Be the one who says yes to the child who has heard no all her life. Will you be the one? Mike, could you share a few more experiences with us? Uh, I have quite a few <laughs> to share. And there, there are positive things and there are negative things. Okay. But uh, uh, we were talking earlier about an example where a young man that I still have as, as uh, a guardian uh, had been in a mental health facility for well over a month and was coming back to school in the middle of the school year. And he discovered the night before he was restarting school that he needed a school uniform, mm -hmm. just a shirt. 
he didn't have money for the shirt. Uh, the person he was living with, a relative at the time, didn't have money for a shirt. I was able to contact the Children's Guardian Fund at 4 p.m. the night before he was re-enrolling and Jan at the Children's Guardian Fund met him at school the next morning to buy him school shirts so he could get restarted in school. Wow, that's quite a story. Yeah, yeah. Do you have others? It's, it's something we don't think about uh, in our day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Um, I had a uh, eight-year-old boy who has since been adopted who is a bright boy, but due to early family circumstances, no one ever read to him. Uh, he didn't, so he was behind in school. The Children's Guardian Fund provided not just funding, but a tutor. And the tutor went to the school once a week. And then we met on Saturday mornings at the library. And he had tutoring. He has since been adopted by his uh, foster father and is doing very well. In fact, uh, I received a, a text from him last week uh, with a report card when he had, he had scored, uh, received an A in math. So well, that's a heartwarming story. <laughs> done, he's done very well. <laughs> oh, that's, that's great. What kind of training is required to become a guardian ad litem? Well, the first thing you do is you apply and you go through a background check, including fingerprinting, uh, which is quite an experience. Um, and then you have a two-day two training session. Right. Uh, and then you're certified by the court as a guardian ad litem. And then once you get started, there's ongoing training of various types, uh, either online or in person, various seminars. I went to one, for example, to be a educational advocate because these kids don't have anyone looking out for them at school. Right. So you serve uh, and attend meetings, things like that at school to uh, assist in getting the kids what they need at school. I see. Marianne, your mission, how do you fund it? Well, you know, our cause is a challenging one right. because no one, no one wants to think about the utter sadness and heartbreak these children go through. And so we have to cultivate the community in, in a way, as I said, a challenge. We're not, you know, we don't have pretty puppies and kittens to show. And we can't parade our children and, and their sadness. So we have, you know, we, you know, by trying to educate the community and, and reach out to the community and, and you know, we're, we're available to, to, to fundraise, you know, and, right. and you know, we, we rely on um, uh, many foundations. Um, we apply for grants from numerous institutions. And then there's the, you know, just the individual in the community that comes up with a great idea. Mm -hmm. And uh, for instance, um, um, Jamie Marco last year, she wanted to turn her birthday into something that benefited a, 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 a good cause. Right. And she picked us. Mm -hmm. And so she, she had a, a fundraising birthday celebration and we received all the monies gained from that. So it heightened awareness of our, of our job, of what we do, and at the same time allowed people to celebrate doing it. Right. So you, you, you take that, the, the sadness and the, and, the, and the hard fact of we're just something people don't like to think about. Right. And it, it turns it into a joyous way of, of showing the, you know, bringing money in so that we can then give the children things that, you know, their first new clothes. Right. And, and they can feel the love from the community. And that's, that's I, I'd say that's our mission. At the end of the day, that's what it's really about, yes. is, is the love and the support of the community. Yes. And, and you're the vehicle to do that. We do our best. I would take a check from you right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll see what we can do about that. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else you'd like to add before we close? Mike? I'd like to add that if potential donors right. could see 
these children and the expressions, that the, the joy that they have when they have a bed to sleep in, they have decent clothes to wear to school, they go to a summer camp, which I've seen, um, they have a tutor so that they realize they can be a decent student. Mm -hmm. the, the level of joy in their eyes is just overwhelming. Uh, and uh, legally, we can't show that sort of thing here. Mm -hmm. But I guarantee you, if a donor could see it, we would um, have no lack of funding. So uh, surely there must be some people viewing this that would think about becoming a guardian ad litem. How do they do that? How do they reach out? There are two main ways. One is to contact the local guardian ad litem office in your local county. Right. Uh, there's one for DeSoto, Sarasota, and Manatee counties. And uh, also there is a website, uh, guardianadlitem.org. And there's a form there that you can fill out uh, to be a volunteer. Okay. And Marianne, how do people reach out to you to make a contribution? Our website is um, uh, childrensguardianfund.org. And it's, it's, uh, there's a button you click. It says donate. Pretty simple. <laughs> very simple. <laughs> and that's it. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much for appearing on our show today. Yeah, we're thanks. so glad to have you. This is a very worthy cause, and uh, we're hoping that we'll be able to give you more recognition and uh, more viewers out there than maybe you have otherwise. Thanks for having us. Thank you very much. Thank you. Exposure is what we need. I know. <laughs> this has been Spotlight on Charities. Thank you very much for joining us. Mm -hmm.